So we've got everybody here. You guys uh, good to get started? Mm, yeah, um, yeah, I'm just gonna take a look at the town stuff, but yeah, sorry for all the a bit intermittent stuff. That's okay. Me at my my availability and all that. Yeah, it's all good. I have ten, so I'm gonna sp I'm gonna up my mobility by like two. Oh shit! All right. uh -uh. Oh yeah, let you me just what? check what are my skills and all that. Um, anyone got close combat and willing to teach McCoy or? Yes, I, I think that's. I think you'd mention that. Yeah, Hana will. Uh... <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, good. So my brain does actually do some persistence of intent. Okay, between All sessions. Right. All right, I'll sacrifice these five. I'll left with three, and I'll up the close combat. That's my investment. I'm good to go. Okay. <clears throat> so just as a quick recap, last time, so you know, with your current mission, you went to a planet that, yes, as Ron pointed out, was a StarCraft reference. Uh, you went to New Gettysburg on MP412, and you were called there because you were trying to, you know, you were asked to solve the source of interference, like with electronic systems beneath the colony. And you went down into the caves and were attacked by a huge goddamn bat creature that almost killed Cat. Um... And you killed it, but then you basically uh, poked the nest and had to haul ass out of the cave. But uh, you did actually bring back both the bodies of the dead colonists as well as uh, the creature you killed. So we're currently picking up where you are driving back to the colony. You are in the uh, Dudensky's uh, Dihoitite tractor and it's shaking around a little bit. Uh, and by a little bit, I mean hard enough to where some debris, uh, or some crates come loose and clock, uh, LaRoe on the head and she drops like a rock. Uh, now, um, bodyguard. Uh, no, I'm saying this is like a moment to explain, uh, that LaRoe is, yeah, not going to be with us today. Oh, okay. So, hmm. um. But so, like, so meanwhile, Kat's just over in the corner, like, clutching her arm. LaRoe was, you know, got birds, like, flying over her head. Um, and so, yeah. Um, is there anything anybody wants to do while we are driving in the, driving to the colony, or do you want to skip to when we're at the colony? Uh, I'm going to try some bandages on LaRoe and make sure we don't have to do a mercy kill. Let me let me see. Uh, what I got? What I got? Oh, great! I'll just take a sip from uh, whatever it is I got bottled in a flask. <clears throat> <clears throat> Not doing much else during the the drive, I guess. Yeah. So is that uh still a rogue. What? Never mind. I'll fix it. I'll figure it out. Okay. Um so you head over to uh New Gettysburg and even despite, you know, what's going on, lots of people are out and about still, you know, doing their jobs. Uh Dudensky pulls the uh the Dihotai tractor up to administration and he gets out and sort of gestures is like, Alright, y'all follow me. <laughs> Um, and does somebody want to stay with Laro? And I guess if you if you want Cat to just chill on the tractor, I'll stay with Laro because now well, Laro's my patient. Okay. Um, so I take it so that would be um, Hana, Uma, and McCoy going in, right? Okay. Someone's got to keep uh, uh, McCoy and Hana separated. <laughs> I can behave. She does. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, that is strange. You were very well behaved when we were alone together earlier. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you teach you teach punches really well. Got to give you that. When you're not trying to be a creepy sex robot, you're pretty all right, Hannah. <laughs> I wasn't aware. I was creepy. Ah. Comes with the job, I suppose. Yeah, all good. I got my drink. We got a job. Let's fucking do it. 
Okay, so um, your guide uh, escorts you th into the building. He takes you to operations and you know sort of invites himself into uh, the CA Kirkley's office with a knock and opens the door. Ma'am, the Hyperion crews back from the caves, he says. So Megan stands up. She's like, all right, what's the deal? Did you find Sheriff Redwell in the away team? What happened down there? Did we take images of these people that we brought back? No, we you took brought the back the bodies. I, I know, but did we play take photos from? Uh, them? I mean, that's I guess that's up to you if you did. What? Well, we don't know if these people are the ones that uh, that were sent down, so we have to try to show that them something. Did, did you could you just think, remove uh, the head uh, and then uh, bring it over? Did, do you think McCoy would have had in that situation the time to um, take DNA samples? Of uh, the creature you killed? Yeah, or the people. like. Um, I, I mean, you have the bodies of both, anyone. so the ride, oh, I would... Okay. I'd say the yeah, ride that is... That makes it a lot easier. Yeah. The ride would be, like, probably about, you know, 30, 45 minutes. Well, um, Anna will just... Uh, she'll... Because of the suit is the pr the Prometheus one, she'll just go back to the recording and literally right. just pull it from there for them. Oh, that's true. For the colonists or the creature or both? Both. For okay. whatever you guys need with it. Okay. And it is very efficient. So she watches with just a mix of awe and like shock at you know the footage of the bat creature and then sees the the bodies of the uh the colonists like fucking damn it. Yeah, that's uh, that's Sheriff Redwell and his team. Or what's left of them. Do you know what that creature is? This is the first I've ever seen something like that. Great, so we've got something that's native that we don't know about. Wouldn't be the first time though, would it? Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know what to uh, what to make of it, but I reckon you guys are uh, scientists. I'm sure you have a you know biologist on your crew. McC Isn't McCoy the xenobiologist? Yes. Fucking right. No, we got someone. <clears throat> we got a xenobiologist. So that play makes it one better. Excellent. What I would recommend, that not that I'm probably telling you anything you don't know, is that I would recommend you do an autopsy on that thing and try to. You know, try to figure out because who knows that could be what's ca causing interference. Of those creatures, if it's like if it's like Earth bats, and echolocation and all that, you know, they probably. Uh, but only one way to find out. Hmm. And also, and as she says, it's like uh, you know, just my own personal thanks. I'll have a hundred bucks from our colony banks transferred to each of your accounts. Um. But. Also, I mean, since the signal here sucks, I'll have to ask you to report the situation here to Wayland Utani and ask them to maybe send in a platoon of Colonial Marines to go into the cave and kill all those creatures down there. Let's first establish whether or not these bats are really doing it, because if they are doing it, then fine, we can send the Marines. But if they're not, then your problem hasn't been fixed. Well, I mean, whether they are or aren't the problem, they're still down there and we, we don't have the means to kill them. No, that's very, that's fair enough. First, let's go ahead and do the science and let and leave it with McCoy to see if he can find out more information about these creatures and see if they actually could be the cause of it. Because for we know, they may be one part of a problem, is the way I see it. Very well. Well, I mean, I'll be here waiting to hear from you. And also, and, and just don't forget that everybody, including including Hana, uh, will get a hundred bucks. Alright, we'll add Anna that to it. Anna looked at the money and was like, strange that there should be so much conflict over something so small. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, don't, don't, uh, don't overthink it, Hannah. Just don't overthink it. I'll Smiley leave it to some type. types to make big shit out of small shit. <clears throat> it happens. Alright. So is there anything you guys want to do while you're at the colony, or do you want to just go back to the Hyperion? Uh, well, they wanted an autopsy of the creature we had. You guys fought, or yeah, you you guys yeah, uh, okay. fought a uh, like a giant so, bat. Oh, where we got that thing right now? Uh, currently, it and the bodies of the of the colonists uh would be in the uh, 
in the tractor. Okay. So if they want me to do an autopsy, you just would just have a look at this creature. Well, I mean, you would have yeah, would be. a better uh, better odds of doing so aboard the Hyperion because you have yeah, you know, right. dedicated science facilities. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> I'll uh, haul that fucker back. Uh, I guess they want to keep the bodies of the colonists. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take those to the morgue. Proper burial and all that. Yeah, it's a small colony, so odds are it's just going to go straight to the cat food machine. <laughs> well, whatever they do with them. Um, make sure it doesn't stink up my lap. i got to take a look at Big Ugly Owl here. Cannot have guts mixed up with each other, you know. Got to keep up some semblance of a quarantine area. What's Leroy's condition, man? <clears throat> Unconscious still. It's thin rot. Well. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Alright, let's get this corpse back to the ship so we can analyze it. Yes, ma'am. I just goes and picks it. Puts it in a bag, picks it up. How big is this bat, by the way? Um, it's yeah. basically man-sized. Yeah, I'm imagining some Mothman kind of thing. Pretty much. Okay. okay. West Virginia. <laughs> Mothman Mama. <sighs> yeah. So you drag this, uh, you know, this creature back aboard the. The Hyperion. No, no I don't. Hannah doesn't drag. Hannah just lifts and no. then moves like a freight. <laughs> nice. Um, so, right. you yeah, you carry it aboard the Hyperion. In the meantime, uh, Cat goes off. I cannot move to... my token. token? Oh. Yeah. Um, it's paused. Oh, you're. Stucky oh, you're... Wucky. There we go. Try now. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. I'm sorry. I didn't Because I need, I need the big lap for this fucker. Yeah. Oh, okay, the science module. Cool. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, you're doing that. Cat goes to the med lab, and then uh, before we do the science module stuff, uh, so, Madeline, what are you going to do with uh, Laro? Uh, I'm gonna, just going to take Laro over to the med bay, and then uh, just make sure everything's fine, because uh, it's a concussion, and you got to take that seriously. Mm-hmm. So Madeline, you know, goes with Laro to the med lab, um, and so Hannah's carrying the science module. So Uma, are you going to go to your quarters, or are you going to go with them to the science um, module? I'm going to go ahead and do the science module first, and then do the checkup on Laro after. Okay. So let me just uh, check in the uh, call it. I or no wait. Oh, alien rulebook. There it is. Um, cause I'm, I'm trying to remember what, uh, analysis does. Cause I know, uh, you, you have that right, Lux. Uh, what exactly? Sorry. Um, analysis talent. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. So you can he, roll. You use observation <laughs> and you get to ask questions about things in particular. Yeah. And if he fails, yep. he causes stress. Yeah. But if I succeed, I lower everyone's stress. Mm, that is also so... true. Pick your own. Pick whether you like the risk of being around me while trying this or not. I That's got it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Oh, listen, helicopter manager. Oh, what's interesting also is that um, you could actually combine if you ever had the talent breakthrough, you could combine that with analysis. Mm. Once per game session, you automatically pass an observation roll of your choice. Yeah, but the big thing is you only get one. When you want to get more, mm -hmm. ask more questions. Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to roll observation. Okay. Uh, for analysis, it's just also an get individual your, um, one. Your right. bonus for being a xenobiologist, don't forget. Okay, so it's... Uh, you get a plus uh, one for like, a, dealing with creatures. Oh, right, for this specifically, yeah? Yeah. Oh, for, yeah that's, oh, I almost forgot, yeah, that's a nice one. Can I assist? Specialization. Uh, you, I have yeah, you, can, you can assist. Okay, so you get plus it. one from Anna. Okay, Hana at the instruments here. Like, you know. Yeah, she will basically. What does it get on a. Robotic operating theater. 
controls. She's got on the uh, designate she... nurse's outfit. Start oh, controls. Christ. I don't know. When did you get that? Let's say like full biohaz bio suit with this thing. But... Like All a right. hazmat yeah. suit? Because you would have those aboard the ship if you want one. It... Yeah. Well, just something that something that decontaminates easily because oh, you're not okay. going to walk out of here uh, in blood. making contact. Yeah, making contact with all the shit that uh, we're digging through. So, yeah. Then I would say probably in this entire section here, maybe could be where I'm good highlighting. decon area. So we have like an operating mm -hmm. theater thing here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wish they had put some interior stuff in here, but yeah, I mean, I get it. It's from. Uh, the Cronus and all that. Anyway, um, plus two observation. Oh Christ! I can barely read that because of my dark mode stuff. Uh, roll. Oh, oh well. If something. You, if you like, you can push that. Oh yeah. Uh, so where, where's my stress? Oh, it's zero. Good. Yep. I'm going to push that for more. Ooh. Four. Hey, nice. Oh, damn. That's some good ones. So I forgot the exact questions. Okay. Uh, you so could ask. it's in the um, in the handouts. You can look under player rules and then click. Uh, I scroll down to talents, scientist talents. But uh, the questions, I can read them because I have the thing. Or actually, no, I can hit show players. Can okay, you great. Do you see that? There you go. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, well, the first question seems pretty fucking obvious. Mm -hmm. um, although, Second if it was, was ever human-like or semblance to it, that would be an interesting one to ask. Um, well, I, I would go for the, the... Let's see. Like, how does it function? This, yeah. this creature. Also, apparently, I just noticed a typo. So, how old is it and what is its purpose are two different questions. So, there are actually a total of six on the list instead of five. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but what was your uh, question? Uh, so how does it work, basically, so, the physiology of it? Um, so the creature, it seems to function. I mean, it's got some differences, but it's very similar to, um, to Earth bats, in that it, um, you know, like you know, one thing about it is that it actually does have, you know, venom. So if this thing bit you, you would be in trouble, especially because. With it being an unidentified alien creature, there that you know they would there wouldn't be a cure for it, at least not at first. Uh, I um, see. So it's just as just lucky that you guys avoided getting bitten. Okay. Uh, but so... also, uh, in terms uh -huh. of another similarity with bats is that it uses echolocation to navigate, but with it being much bigger, um, you know, it has like a stronger sort of like Sonic, I guess I'm not an expert on bats, so just it's got more range. Basically. It's got more range. It's stronger, yeah. and with this in particular, it could actually disrupt, you know, like sonar and like oh, electronic yes. stuff. Interesting. So the acoustics on this thing can be so wild that it can actually. It's basically like a living radar stuff. jammer. Oh Christ! Okay. Interesting. Okay, so what problems can it cause? Like, with aspects to the venom, the details on the... So the venom uh, would be, you know, you would estimate, um, would you know, it, it, would, it carries, you know, rabies. But, oh, like, a well. much more advanced version of rabies that would work faster. Because, for one thing, it's delivering much more into your system when it bites you because it's so big. Mm -hmm. But... You know, it would also, based on some tests that you do, you know, analyzing the composition, it takes a little while as the Hyperion system is trying to kind of understand it, but you figure out that, like, this stuff would work really fast. Not, like, in a couple of minutes, but, like, I don't know, it would basically be half the time of however long it would take regular rabies to sink in. So it'd be dead in a week or two. Well, Possibly great. faster. Oh, uh, great. Um, ah. And then also in terms of, and then the other the other part of it is, um, based on the the echolocation bit, uh, that you know, it, it, as as stated earlier, it would actually cause 
interference with electronic systems and signals because it's basically sending its own signal and has a louder voice. So, and, and also the fact that um, there were, uh, it was implied that there were a lot of them down there. So there's like this giant sort of oh, nest great. of them that they're basically making a ruckus, making like a ruckus, and that's causing interference with the colony above. All right. So that brings us to two questions. Um, How old is it? Yeah, that might be a good one. Uh, like this... any, anything about its life cycle like that. Okay. So we can this deduce one... what it's... Uh, yeah, how old it is, and also if we can kind of go there, like, um, yeah, w what it's like if it's younger, you know, like any metamorphosis to it. So it follows a, um, you know, this, the one you killed was about three years old. And at its current size, you're able to you know, you get the sense that this one is probably fully grown, so it grows to full size, you know, at, a, at sort of a, like, I mean, again, this is just my inexperience because I didn't have time to research it, but with bats, like, it, you know, grows at a, sort of a, a different speed, um, but, you know, you're not necessarily sure how big the babies are or how, you know, how, how large mm. or small they are. So there's no real estimates of whether that's sort of a slow growth or if they just like rapidly, like, blow uh, up. Right. but this Can one we... was three. So as to, uh, with how does it work? Did we see any kind of reproductive systems? Can we see if it's male, female, or, uh, if this it one, adhere to that? uh, this one was male. <laughs> okay. Well, no baby making secrets to be unlocked from this specimen, but so this thing could be causing is definitely causing the problems that we're here for. So it would seem definitely is uh, quite a pesky little fucker. Double that with all the guys you think might be down there. Well, that's it. That's a yes. Can you give me a copy of these so I can go ahead and forward it over and see if we can get proper manpower to deal with this? Because this is going to definitely be outside of our capability. Oh, yeah. It's right on the terminal there. Just grab one of the, the empty uh, blue ones on the left. You can make a copy Thank for you. it. <laughs> and I obtained a copy of it. I see. Miss Drake, would you like me to fix you any food or drinks? No, not for now. Not um, after this crap. <laughs> no, I think right now we just need to go ahead and mm, get the right people involved to go ahead and do that. Might have to see if I can go ahead and just... How well is the signal from the ship to outside of the atmosphere at the moment? Uh, look, what I like need to, to... do is actually... Because last time we did it, uh, apparently there was still that <clears throat> problem that we had in the beginning. Well, we I mean, I would say that, you know, from, if you're trying to contact orbit from the ground, mm. um, you know, you were, like last time, I think you did a ComTech roll from orbit to ground, not from ground to orbit. So I would say you probably yeah. roll again, just for consistency. Okay. Could we use the information that we have obtained about the bats to go ahead and create a means to buy, uh, to work around the interference? Well, can I pipe in in character? or? Oh, yeah. I'm asking out of character first, oh, okay. and then I'm... No, I, was, I was asking a question outside of character, and if it's... Because then I'm thinking, if that... Yeah. I don't know. I'm literally going off the top of my head right now, so I'm deciding whether or not it was out of character or not. Fuck. <laughs> no problem. I just, uh, I know some real world stuff that might work. <laughs> okay, go for it. Well, what you could do with the fuckers is, um, create empty sound. Basically get samples of what they do. Set up some speakers. I don't know how they won't fuck up those things, but you can cancel out their sound waves. They can shout all they want, but uh, nothing comes out. 
Or you can put right. sound dampening material around there. Uh, I don't know. They're underground, right? Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah, you could put sound dampening material on the cave walls, but yeah, that'd be tricky. Theory is easy, but given that they, well, they're not really playful types, are they? No, Installing they set tech would be a problem, so I'd say it's easy to just burn the fuckers. And in order to get to do that, we would need the reinforcements to do that. I think the only way we're going yeah, to do it... that is if we leave, uh, leave planet and just go back into orbit. I don't know what kind of manpower there is. Uh, what the exact amount of power of these fuckers in there. Well, with the fact it's... that basically... How many people were killed from that um, security team that was sent from the colony? Uh, if memory serves, let me just double check. Um, it was, what, three or four I'm people. just checking the, the map to see. Uh, there were three people dead. Three people dead. Out of how many that was sent down into the caves? Uh, that was the entire party. It was a TPK. That was entire. Okay. So, entire. Okay. So but that was dual... just light security forces, right? Yeah, just it was just it was led security. by it was led by the sheriff, no. Sheriff Rodwell. So he went down there with with two others, try to see what was going on, but he died. Well, if you get some Marines or whoever in there, could yeah. be a chance, but it's not going to be easy. I'd say it's easy to just take out as many of the fuckers as you can, and uh, is, see what kind of sound dampening you can install. Or you go very creative and engineer something that, uh, well, fucks up their ability to produce echolocation, mm. like a virus or a chemical. Uh, side effects, of course. Yeah, there's going to be uh, quite some testing needed to make sure it doesn't fuck everyone up topside, but. There is options. Could, could it be possible to synthesize some sort of, I don't know, something that can go ahead and knock them out in a gaseous form that we can pump um, into the cave? You can pump carbon monoxide probably in there. They won't even know. This thing breathes oxygen. Out of character, right? It does. I, yeah, it has I assume. Oxygen. Okay. Well, a good chance. Uh, it looks like it does aerobic processes, so it needs to breathe. Uh, I'd say pumping carbon monoxide kills you and me just as well as that fucker would. They'll get sleepy, they won't even know what hit them. If they have a sleep cycle, best to pump it in at night. They'll never wake up. Just need a lot of it and make sure it doesn't leak out, otherwise everyone chokes up there. Do we have any pup? Uh, we do have, I think we have a pup. Um, in uh, the ship's inventory, correct? Uh, I would double check that, but I would assume so. Let me see. Hyperion inventory. Uh, you have one pup. Alright. Let's maybe go ahead and use the pup unit to go ahead and see if we can see and locate any other potential holes that we might need to seal up. And we take on that idea of pumping monoxide into the caves. As long as we close up every hole in that case, so it doesn't A, escape, and B, we don't go ahead and get anyone else killed. That's one way we can look at it. Yeah, you might want to check for the surrounding rock layers. That's not porous or laid back to anywhere near the base. Uh, mm. That's your biggest danger, really. It's indiscriminate, so you got to be sure to uh, put the stuff okay. where it's needed. All right, so but it would be ahead. very effective. They wouldn't really notice. You would just get drowsy, fall asleep, yeah. never wake up. Same as with humans. That's why it kills okay. so well. All right, so here's what I'm going to... Uh, okay, out of character, how far can the pup unit be controlled and used from? The pup, I think... Let me oh. uh, check in gear. Um, equipment, pups, mapping device. So a pup can... It has extreme range. It scans one zone per round. It can detect enemies in the zones they pass. It okay, pretty so much roams can... anywhere it likes in Prometheus. So. Yeah. But keep in mind, uh, they tried using pups before, and they, you know, they malfunction because of the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah they're quite shit. sensitive to that stuff. Okay, well, 
okay, then maybe we don't need to send it around in the caves. We just got to go ahead and see if we can locate any cracks and crevices that might have holes leading into that caves. <sighs> but that's going to take a while, wouldn't it? Mm. If I might pipe in, I would say you that technically you have uh, completed your mission. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But, uh, it's not it's not our job anymore, but I mean they I know. could pu they could pump in uh just nitrogen, set up some detectors in the base to see if it leaks out anywhere. Nitrogen is sure. harmless. It's most of where you breathe, but it does not much. The re there's a reason why I'm doing this, but um first things first we need to go ahead and see if we can get someone sent over here. But the problem here is it's either we go ahead and try to knock them out so we can make the communication from planet, or we leave planet, go into orbit, and make the communication. That's the only problem. So do we want to leave or leave planet, go up, to, go to orbit to make the transmission, or do we want to try to see if we can minimize the interference from down here? That's the question I was hmm. trying to figure out. You can always try from the surface. Anyway, I put this this bad thing into the freezer, just awaiting what. Right is required to be done with it. Okay. Um can always incinerate it. <clears throat> yeah. You know what? I think uh, Uma's going to just go straight up to the bridge and just turn and make the decision from there. To uh, Romero. Yes, ma'am. All right. We're going to leave orbit. Sorry, leave planet and head into orbit of the... of uh, uh, New Gettysburg. Uh, yes, ma'am. I will uh, I'll get the engines warmed up and uh, we'll be in orbit soon. All right. Let me know once we're in orbit. I'm going to have to make a transmission to the company. Yes, ma'am. And then she you. You know, turns around and starts uh, getting the ship geared to take off. All right. All right. Let's play the... At this moment in time, even if we were to go ahead and do McCoy's suggestion, the problem here is in the end we need to make get them here as soon as possible so i just think it's probably a lot easier to just get into orbit get the transmission sent off and if we are told hey can you try to sedate them then well we can go back to the planet and do that if they turn and said oh we'll send someone down there to go handle it then we'll go from there well i mean that's why uh megan asked you to you know she's saying like well you know go in there and send like call because we can't call for uh back up you know call for mm. you, you go and you call for some colonial marines to go down there and kill them all mm. that's what she was you know just a little uh, yeah. reminder i know i know i know and that's why i was trying to make the <laughs> thing in my brain i was going with the idea of if we kill if we try to sedate them or try to minimize the interference they were doing we can just save ourselves having to go off planet but if it's going to be a lot of uh, hassle trying to uh, negate the yeah because the hyperion would not be equipped with like any sort of uh, something com comparable to nerve gas well that's um, why we're thinking monoxide oh mm. it's easier and it's probably the same that's why um lux was saying that uh before from koi is it'll be the easiest way to knock them out if they wouldn't notice that is if you want to play with gas in that way. I mean, if it's cheaper to push in uh, some Marines that are too gun-happy to shoot them all down. Hey, uh, Just not sure if that's part of our job. Just sharing my insight. Anyway, uh, I got them in the freezer. I need a drink. All right. Just got to wait till we get to orbit. Yeah, by this point, and... the ship, like, you, you sort of faintly hear the engines, like warming up and then the ship's kind of shaking a little bit um so you're able to know that the hyperion is starting to take off mm -hmm. so probably as we're oh sorry go probably ahead. as we're leaving orbit I excuse uh, you'll have to excuse me for a second um i'll probably send a transmission to the administrator to inform her that we'll we'll head off planet and go back into orbit so that she's not thinking that we're just uh, dropping and going and not doing anything about it. I, even though she did say that. Fair enough. Um, 
So you get into orbit. All right. Then make contact with the company. And probably let them know what exactly they're dealing with, so I would send them a copy of the information McCoy has given. That I, 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 that McCoy has put together for me to take. Alright, so you send that over. Now, with the distance that you're at, combined with the interference, it's not going to be an instant transmission. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you do get confirmation that the message was sent. Okay. How long will it take for them to get there and get back? Uh, for the message to get there, um, at least, uh, if I remember correctly, at least a week. Okay. Hmm. Well, we've done our job, I guess. Um, and we've got, well, the dead specimen in, in our cargo bay. I guess if we just start heading back to Anchor Point, since the mission objectives as... Uh, seems to be achieved as you stated yourself, Cody. Yep. So, I mean, do you uh, say adios to uh, to the colony? Yep, yeah, okay. I think so. What's everyone else thinking? They think the same thing? Sure, why not? You're the boss today. You get to make the hard decisions, unlike LaRoe, uh. who's uh, in medical. Mm. Alright. Yep. Yeah, uh just turn I will probably communicate to Romero and just say Romero set course back to anchor point. Inform us inform me if we um Oh we'll probably be jumping back into hypersleep anyway. Uh for the trip back. Cause how long did the trip back get to here take? Two weeks? Uh let me double check that. Um, I think it was it was it? yeah, well, Oh no, it was more than two weeks. Uh, travel time from Anchor Point to MP412. Uh, you're looking at an 11 week journey in total. Okay. So. Um. All right. Probably before we go into hypersleep, I guess um, Umu is going to check up with Madeline, find out how Laro's condition is. How is the captain's condition? Stable. Just need some bed rest. Nothing much. That's it. Oh, good. So nothing that would cause question to possible death and discomfort if we travel, travel back? As I said, the row is stable, Uma. I'm just being meticulous and thorough. All right, thank you for the update. All right, how's Kat, by the way? Is her injuries severe? Just needs time and all of this to convalesce. Um, nothing major. Uh, she'll be up and ready by the time we get out of cryo. All right. All right. We're gonna, probably gonna have to. We're gonna head back to anchor point anyway, so we'll probably have to jump back into hypersleep anyway. So. Uh, might as well get ready, get the crew ready. I'll get that going then. All right, Hana. Yes. Um, since you're going to be up and about on the ship maintaining it, if you get a response back from the company about the transmission we just sent, pre, uh, please wake me up. I see. Of course, ma'am. All right. How would you like uh, to be woken up? Well, not obviously quickly, because that will probably cause a lot of problems if you're woken up quickly. Just normal procedures. Just wake me up so I've got enough time to be coherent to be able to deal with the matters at hand. So you want an entire pot of coffee, then? Most definitely, yes. And add Very some well Irish whiskey, whiskey into it just to be on the safe side. Of course, ma'am. And I would, I would be going into cryo. Okay, so you guys aren't going to have uh, have dinner together, or will you? Oh, just... if 
I think if anything, we'll probably go ahead and do the normal traditional thing of having dinner, something to eat before we get into cryo. Yeah. Okay. Didn't think about that for a minute. Do you guys want to play out that scene, or do you want to just say, oh, we ate dinner and went to cryo? No, unless we want to go ahead and converse and talk about the near dangers of how we nearly got killed. Nah, I'm good with skipping that. Okay. Um, Alright, so... Before, oh, sorry. Do you wish to continue your training? Mm, could get some movement in before it's cryo. Very well, then. She starts instructing you. <laughs> Giving karate lessons. <laughs> uh, I know how the body moves, but I never really tried it myself. Christ, how do you lift your leg up like that? <laughs> <laughs> Should have stayed off the flask. Is very flexible for many reasons. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep all the reasons a uh, mystery, shall we? Oh. Now try to hit me. Do not worry about damaging me. Oh, don't worry. I'm not worried. <laughs> <laughs> like we just played it out. Do we have to roll for that, or um, you you guys can if you want, or we can. Yeah, just... we can. You just regular all close right. combat, no weapons. Yeah, Post close combat. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, wow. You actually succeed. Of course. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you actually succeed. Well, damn. Yeah. Seven <laughs> run. I guess those lessons rubbed off. Cheers. You taught him too well. <laughs> Well, at least we know that if uh, Big Batman in the freezer over there comes back to life to eat our cornbread, I could kick his ass back in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everybody, you know, after the karate lesson and after having dinner, everybody enters the freezers. No, we are not done. Uh, so, uh, now, however, though, as you are... Uh, you know, like traveling back to Anchor Point. Uh, Hana actually, you know, gets a message from Mother uh, ordering her to uh, awake the crew. I see. Uh, Hana does a cup, starts prepping a cup of coffee and then goes to to get everyone. Oh, that would be on a deck, since Cryo's on a deck. Correct. Yeah, you can. And don't forget, you can jump decks. So. Yeah. Cool. Yes, Hana comes in like wheeling one of those fancy, uh, like airline carts. One of one of those fancy like uh, tea carts, except there's a bunch of coffee, and I guess crumpets, <laughs> other stuff on it <laughs> from Miss Drake. <laughs> Here's your feast. Fuck the rest of you. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you wake up, you know, as everybody's, you know, coming to, and you hear Coles go, we're already back. What's going on? I was instructed by Mother to wake up the crew. So, and Why? Then, yeah, and then just as you asked that, uh, you hear, uh, Agent Drake, priority message. Please check your network logs as soon as possible. All additional personnel, please prepare for duty. Miss Drake, your coffee. Done the way you requested. Thank you. Give the crew the food, I just want the coffee. And she gets up, and she's just dawdling, grabbing the coffee, and going to the corporate suite. McCoy uh, smuggling two shots of vodka, quote, quote, into his coffee. <laughs> I see. So we're going to, so then uh, Uma goes Bre to breakfast her, champions. Uh, her corporate suite. I'll just move your token over for you. Thank you. And you presumably log onto your computer and uh, you mm -hmm. see. Right, so you know, check Discord. 
Interesting, interesting. So, uh, and you know, while you're while you're doing that, so everybody else is. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Um, what are you? Uh, what are you guys up to? Like going to a, going to the bridge for a briefing or doing anything beforehand? Playing well, basketball in the vehicle bay. <laughs> Nice. Um, is Hannah allowed to be in the room while I'm reading this message, um, or is it not? I mean, that's up to you. You're currently the ranking uh, ranking officer on the ship, so it's up to you whether you would want Hannah in your office or not. I mean, she didn't watch you sleep. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she sits there and goes... She looks so pretty when she's not talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's All like right. humans are so much more active when their necks aren't broken. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh, oh wow. Well. God. Um, what did okay. We okay. Um, I would pretty much be tapping onto the comms unit and turn and say, All right, everyone, get some food. We've got a mission briefing. Mm. Be there in ten minutes. And she cuts off. All right. So everybody, so I'm assuming everybody goes. They get their food and then they, you know, head to the bridge. Yeah, uh, shit, no. shower, shave. <clears throat> shit, shower, shave. All right. So yeah. I mean, we'll, yeah, we'll sure, but with... not enough time to dry the hair, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah. I'll just have you know, cat here representing the, uh, or not cat, Sierra representing the rest of the NPC crew. So. Yeah. So everybody all gathers, I'll just move it. And we'll also and also that Laro, you know, will say that she and Kat would be in cryo sleep. I'm still put keeping them in there. They're in the freezers. Okay. Hmm. So they're still in cryo sleep, uh, but everybody else is currently on the bridge. And uh Uma. Uh, well, hopefully everyone's enjoyed their how long have we traveled for? Uh, according to the ship logs, you have been currently, tra you've traveled for about uh, a week and three days. <coughs> Not before you were, you were woken up. Oh, that's shit. Okay. Well, looks like we came out of cry way earlier intending than, mm, than intended. Well... Looks like we have a distress call SOS to attend to, guys. And she will display the message to the rest of the crew so they can see it. Uh, now just gotta. Oh, screw it. Fucking wonderful. It the, I will just put it in the channel. Um, I'm in the Hyperion one. Yeah, I can put it on, uh, if you want, I can put it on in a handout on, and then just show it. Oh yeah, that'll probably work even so, better. And that way my viewers, what few I have, can actually see it. Um, hold on, let's see. Uh, a folder, so create a new journal entry, and then... Alright, I will give a quick readout until you've done that. Okay, but, um, no, it's... don't worry, show the text. Go. Cool. Do you guys see that? Um, and... Yep.
I see. A distress signal. Though of his unknown origin, how do they know that it's indeed a distress signal, not something that might be misinterpreted as one? At this moment in time, they, I think it's more to the fact that it's Jesus. Being... They're really putting us on this crap. Well, then here's the question I ask. I'll ask you: Does the additional zeros to, will be added to our payment if we can pull this off? Seem to be motivational enough. Why do you think that is? This is just for free. It's fucking risky. If the company is saying they're adding a few extra zeros, I do not see why they wouldn't go ahead and add a few extra zeros. There Hell, are also the... problems of if the not if the mission is denied, then there is a distinct hmm. possibility that we in the time will decide to void your contract and void all payment as well. Well, no matter what, we still gotta go ahead and do the job. It's in our contracts. Is it our contract to pick fights? For fuck's sake. I would have to check yours to confirm. But it is not in Miss Drake's as far as I'm aware. No, we all same signed the same contract. McClay, it's only gonna get into fights if Miss Drake fucks up the uh, negotiations. Mm -hmm. It comes to that. You're assuming there will be negotiations. Oh, I'm assuming that I both mean... sides are going to be adults about it. I see. Well, if it's any consolation, if you need some labor, I would be more than happy to do it for you. That would help alleviate your annoyance. I'm just saying, the SOS, sure, but this is getting real close, starting to pick fights over scraps. Look, at this point <sighs> in time, let's first go ahead and identify what this signal is, and then... Yeah, all right, work. fine. Figure out what kind of scrap it is. Yeah, if it's something that's some something of alien origin, if this is what Mother is saying, then it will be a benefit to the company. And if it's of a benefit to the company, it's it's a benefit to us, is the way I'm looking to look at it. Um, Romero, best uh, punch it to the to the coordinates of this distress call, please. She nods. Yes, ma'am. And it should be mentioned that uh, this star system is incredibly close by, so there's no need to enter sleep stasis for this journey. You may if you want to, but you won't be penalized for not doing so. But it'll just basically take like a couple, uh, like a couple of hours to get over there. So, Dr. McCoy, I'm very, I find it very odd that as a scientist, the revelation that there's possibly intelligent life out there would not have a more profound impact upon your being. Look, if you're as long as me in the field, you take a big sip of the canteen of skepticism before you start gaping awe and wonder at every fucking claim of intelligent life. I, for instance, have not discovered it on most of the cruises I served on. So why would a fucking corner of the galaxy be that special moment, huh? Well, you are familiar with the Drake equation. Everyone is. <clears throat> yeah. I mean... The thing is, we already see all this multicellular life everywhere. There's no need to suggest that, well, there's a shitload of intelligent multicellular life either. Haven't found it, haven't really seen it, so I'm just skeptical about this. I'll get excited if I really see it, and then we're gonna get worried because it's intelligent. Yes, though that is the whole thing with it. We are aware that multicellular life exists on other planets. Ergo, there's a distinct possibility, which becomes more and more likely as we're finding more and more of it, that one of those sets of lives is relative to what we consider to be intelligent. Oh, we'll see about that when we land, but yes. for now, keep an open mind. Don't expect too much. Look, I'll f see if I can get gleam some more information from Mother whilst we're travelling there. Who knows, she might give us some more info. If you want, Mr. McCoy. Any info helps. Well, and this is most. where Emma will head up to Mother. 
But more also, if you're stressed, I have varying ways of handling it, <laughs> including a massage if you need so. Yeah, how about no? I got by own stress relief. <laughs> Waves of flask. I see. So two things I'll mention. Uh, the first one is during this time, uh, if anybody wants to roll for any, because you know technically enough time has passed where you could roll for a talent or a skill or whatever if you want, and you have the XP for it. Uh, but so, but I mean, like I said before, you know, just mention what you're rolling for if you decide to do that. And in the meantime, if anybody's doing that, so Drake goes to Mother, and being you know the highest ranked active person on the ship you know you you can basically just walk on in uh this mother core is very similar to you know the one we see in alien mm -hmm. um and to interface with mother i believe now i think this is either in the core rule book or chariot of the gods that you make a comtech role to interface with mother and then you can just ask questions i think that's a mechanic Somebody uh, if Drake has the key card, she doesn't need to like roll. Oh, that's it that's true. Automatic. Yeah, that's true. So we'll skip the roll. Um, and so, what do you ask, Mother? I will be asking Mother. Uh, what is the determination of the signal? Um, uh, you know, this is just me asking, uh, what do you mean by determination? Okay, so it says it's, it, obviously between the time frame of what it's sent out to when we've got, uh, got the message, is there any more information about if it's more of a, an escape pod or a ship or size, um... So, you know, it's mentioned that it is, uh, I believe it, I think... I think, it's, I think it was in the briefing that it was... Um... Yeah, it's unknown whether or not this is anything ranging from a skate pod to a ship that's activated the SOS. But can is there anything that Mother would know about... I don't know. Um, I'm just trying to think. Just bear with me for a minute. That's all good. I'd be really interested to know why Mother thinks it's extraterrestrial. Okay. That is actually a good point. If the... Can she discern... Uh, is she able to go ahead and gleam or discern whether uh, the, the distracted signal um, is alien, and how did they determine it? Uh, they determined that it was well it's presumed to be alien based on the fact that it does not match any known like human frequencies right like there are different sort of frequency like patterns and signals and stuff of different human uh, types of radios and also based on a like a you know association i guess for lack of a better word like you know like for example like upp radio protocols are different than you know uscm for example you know that sort of thing so you know mother keeps tabs on what these different types of radio s frequencies are but this one is off the chart like this is not any kind of human frequency which therefore is you know presumed to be of extraterrestrial origin okay um i'm just having a quick read over the la uh, the first part of it it's saying the LaSalle binational. Um, what kind of uh, what would we m most likely see in this system? Are we looking at um, escort ships, frigates, or most likely just light ca cargo research vessels in this system? Uh, LaSalle is not a military organization, of course. It is, you know, they have a research station in the area, meaning that any sort of ship, like not not in the exact same area as the the alien craft it's supposed to be like you know in a, in a system near that system they have a research outpost meaning that if a ship yeah. came through there it would likely be either a cargo ship delivering supplies or probably a science vessel of their own okay so we can definitely rule out the fact of possible of possible military 
issues, so we can definitely... If there was any kind of armed conflict, it would basically be on the same level as what you have aboard your ship. Okay. But, like, because they don't have any kind of military warships, and if anything, you do actually have the railgun on your ship. That is true. Alright, and it was mentioned, basically, to purchase out of pocket. Are we being compensated for what we pay for to go ahead and actually retrieve this, if we do not get it from them in time? Uh, you may be. But they never... One they never minute, least. please. Okay. So I guess we'll, uh, you know, uh, Dax steps away. Is there anything anybody else is uh, doing right now? Well, if there's any data to look at, McCoy is looking over uh, a monitor. As uh, much as he knows about, uh, about radio. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I would say that, you know, you find out on your, you would find out kind of parallel to what Uma is doing that, uh, the, um, you know, that based on the signals on the radio, sort of, you know, on the radio, this is not a frequency that, you know, you would recognize. So, you know, you kind of find that out on your own. And then also right. looking at star maps, you know, you, you know that, like, you can see on, on the star map that there is a LaSalle presence nearby. All right, I'm back. Okay. Um, I would probably be relaying all the information I'm gathering to the crew um, once I'm finished in here. Um, yeah, because what I was just telling, uh, you know, in your absence, I was just basically saying to, you know, with McCoy, like, he's pretty much kind of finding out the same stuff you are uh, through yep. different means. All right. So the research station that you're talking about, that's, uh, that you mentioned before, if some, if a ship was coming from there to where the SOS signal was detected, who, which, um, out of my, uh, out of ourselves and the research station or any other ships nearby, could we determine if there's any ship that is closer that is not Whalen Yutani? That's going to get to the signal closer. Uh, would we? I would say you would be out of range to. Uh, well, actually, no. You would definitely be able to, you know, sort of get a, a scan going and see that there is a ship uh, in the area. Not not necessarily at right at the alien craft, like at the source of the signal, signal but uh, it's very close to it. All right. How much time before they get there before we do? Uh, they'll probably beat you to it by a couple of minutes, but they might not necessarily be able to leave this, like, they'll get to it, but they might not, like, they might be loading it by the time you get there. So you do have a chance to try to get it from them, but you would have to, I mean, you, you told Sierra to get going, right? I did, and I told her to get there as quickly as possible. Okay. So she is, um, uh, you know, going to, uh, get the ship underway. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, I will relay all the information that I have obtained to the rest of the crew so they're aware of it at the same time. Um, Umo's going to turn around and actually say, who's actually the most qualified person to be shooting anything from that railgun, by the way? Um, so, you know, without this obviously not being a military ship, uh, mm -hmm. not being a warship, Technically, you know, the best person would probably be anybody, you know, on the security crew, be that Hana or maybe Kowalski, because Kat is still in the freezer. Yep. Um, right. So it basically boils down to Kowalski I've got an idea. Or, uh, or Hana. Alright, um, because the idea I was going to turn around and do was communicate with the ship in question, and persuasively go ahead and encourage them to not be anywhere near that ship by firing warning shots of close to 200 meters in between themselves and the signal of where we're going to. So like right between the two. If we were in range enough to do that. Okay, because the railguns, I don't remember what the exact range on them is. I know, you know, in game terms, it's short range. Um, yeah. But yeah, you obviously will need to get in close, and by the time they uh, they get the sh um, 
the you know the alien thing you might it might be a little riskier to do that okay but so anyway so what we'll do is so you go and and i don't have like a star map for it, but you go to um the system in question it takes uh several hours um mm -hmm. The system is one consisting of several celestial bodies in orbit around a white main sequence star. There's a ringed appearance, a ringed planet similar in appearance to Saturn, a white planet that could mm -hmm. potentially be some sort of frozen planet, and a green planet that might be either a gas giant or a solid rock with a dense toxic atmosphere. Um, and though it's difficult to spot it with um, the naked eye, you eventually spot a ship of a similar classification of the Hyperion, and it's a LaSalle Bionational Science Vessel. From the scans, it's designated the Faraday, and you can just barely see its hangar doors starting to open up as it loads, it starts to load something into the hangar. Alright. A call comes over in over the radio uh, if, you know, somebody wants to answer it. Well, it probably should be me. Um... <sighs> This is the USCSS Hyperion to the Faraday. Faraday. May I ask, what's your reason for contacting us? So, the response message is, Crew of the USCSS Hyperion, you're free to fuck off. This is our hall and you're trespassing on our turf. Uh, this is where uh, Uma will probably go ahead and put the call on mute or the communication on mute and go, Hana, just prep the railgun. I'm not planning on firing it. I'm just going to use it as an intimidation. I see. Of course, ma'am. And this is where she'll unmute it. Faraday, this is Hyperion. Negative. We will not be going ahead and fucking off, as you have suggested. I will insist that you cease, return whatever it is that you have found, or I will go ahead and make sure that your engines will be the last thing that you ever see. Um, As you can see, I have our rail guns prepped and ready. And, uh, you know, he mentions like, yeah, you fire on us and, uh, you know, and you, you lose, you know, you lose your prize. Our ship goes up in flames, you lose what you're after. So I wouldn't fire that if I were you. Do you want to try me? Uh, and so he just, you know, there's hesitation and is like, oh, really? Yeah, well, what, what the hell are you going to do? You, you realize that you're, you know, you're possessing an illegal weapon on a civilian starship. You, you would be in so much fucking trouble the moment you fire that thing. Well... That's if anyone catches us. Hence why I'm giving you the choice. And even if, by the gods, someone does go ahead and realize that there is something on this ship, it could easily be fabricated. So besides the point, I'm asking you to cease. Return whatever you found, and leave it to the professionals to handle. You have two minutes. Uh, so somebody, um, uh, give me a Comtech roll, please. Who's got the better Comtech roll? Uh, let's see. Me. Uh, what's my Comtech? Four. I got plus seven. Nine. Well, well, I would say, actually, well, you know, not to make things more difficult, I would say that Uma, because you're kind of busy with the conversation, like, this has mm -hmm. your attention, so okay. it would have to fall on somebody else. Nope, that's fine. So my nine's no longer in service. <laughs> well, I got seven, so... Don't know what else is in there. I mean, now, if you want the NPC crew, one of the crew members could do something. Um, but I'll, I will just double-check. So Sierra, her com tech is five. Um, like, you know, and t like two, two ranks of it. Um... Let's see. Harold. Oh, damn. Harold's got eight. Hmm. So when if you Rumba want him to make the role. Leading... <laughs> when Brumba said Harold. I was going to lead with an uh, iron fist, he... <laughs> <laughs> no shit, he you're pirates good. now. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Um, so it depends on because what I'll say to make this interesting is a herald, you know, won't push unless ordered to, but you know, a human person can push. It's only a one roll difference between Harold's uh, eight and your seven, McCoy. Because Harold could boost you if you want. Which will jump right. jumping up to an eight. I'll just do that. Plus one. Two, so yeah, you so can you can get, get up to three. Two. All right. Uh, with assists. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Harold, Madeline, if Madeline's got any com tech, and Hana, they'll definitely boost it. All right. So with your com tech, uh, you actually realize that the, uh, you know, during the, uh, you know, the heated exchange, uh, the Faraday is actually sending out a signal. Lock it. So they are actually. Uh, you Hold know, on a sec. I had a package at the door. Back oh, again. okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, you know, with your, uh, you know, your context. So basically, that extra success is, um, so the first success was to to detect a signal, and the extra success is, I'll say, you actually you catch wind of what they're saying. So basically, what they're they're telling you, or what they're 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 relaying a signal back to their base. And they're saying, you know, that we encountered a Wayu science ship, that they're here for the same reason we are. Uh, they're apparently sporting a railgun, and they're threatening to use it. Alert the marshals immediately. I didn't realize they had the means for marshals. Hmm. Okay. Ah, just a lucky thing we didn't answer with our real transponder name, huh? You think you can go ahead and disguise our transponder? Well, the thing is, is that you did actually, uh, you know, for, well, for one thing, you never stated uh, that you scrambled your transmissions uh, for the sake of, you know, order, like the order of operations, I would say that you can't exactly go back on that. The second thing is that Drake no. did say Hyperion by name, so they can't actually cross-reference yeah, that. that. One. True. Um, so, you know, you, you did kind of blow your cover in terms of trying to stay anonymous. And you can also assume that based on the fact that they, you know, they scan like, they, you were able to scan them before they contacted you, so there's no reason to assume that they couldn't do the same. Hmm. That is also true. Um, they would have seen, seen everything anyway. Okay. And this is where um, Uma will go ahead and say, Time's up. What's your decision? And the captain doesn't say anything and is actually going, the, you actually see the ship start to move. Romero, get in front of him, please. And she's like, yes, man, but uh, be advised that we're probably not going to be able to catch up to them in time. They're they're ahead of us, and they got a head start. Okay. Faraday, this is Hyperion. The Faraday's uh, captain does not answer. All right. Since obviously weapons don't seem to go ahead and actually hmm, trigger... Anything in you? How does money work? And the ship starts to slow down a little bit. And eventually you get a response like, how much money are we talking? Well, depends on how, you're how much you're being paid for to go ahead and be out here. So, what I'm going to do is... Um, you know, to make this a bribe, because keep in mind, I mean, if they're willing to try to make a run for it, uh, 
you know, they obviously really want this thing. So what I'm going to do is try to kind of coerce them or sort of convince them. Uh, I would like a manipulation roll at a minus two modifier by default. Okay. And it won't be opposed because he's at least interested in hearing what you have to say. Okay. All right. Skills. A manipulation. Negative two to the base. Am I able to use um on um, my take control play wouldn't apply in this matter would it? Uh, I would have to review what that does. Uh, it just says you know how to uh, man uh you know how to make people do what you want and you don't feel bad about doing it. Manipulate with wits instead of empathy. You can do that's that. That's all it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then that's fine. I'll be fine with that if uh, such. So, rolling. And I'm going to push because I have cunning. I am able to push any writ wits roll twice. All right. So one and two. I do have a stress for that. So that's one, two, three, four. Four. Okay. The stress is keeping it together. Okay. So, um, you know, you keep it together. So you got four successes and. Uh, he says, um, it's like, all right, tell you what, it's yours for a hundred grand. Really? You're being paid to be out here for a hundred grand? Do you have any idea how much this would be worth? Well, it depends on what it is. I mean, chances are good if you, you know, if you're out here for the same reason we are, you know damn well what this is. It's an alien craft. Oh, yes, we do have that same information as well. But as, as I said, how about we do it for a better price? How about we do it for 60000 75000 70. With those successes, I will say he agrees to 70. It's like, very well. We will be, uh, we'll be docking shortly. Good. Hyperion out. So, which one of you three want to go ahead and give me about 7,000? Jesus Christ, I just signed I've, on for the I've, signs, now we're in this kind of shit. Hey, Hana, we we'll get... just hand over, we'll just, like, you'll immediately get it from Hana. Yep, because I've already got the majority of it, so I'm already paying for most of it. Yeah, you better be. <laughs> it's your fucking plan. Hey, I thought intimidation would work. I took a page out of Loro's book. It didn't work. Just went ahead and decided to go with my better talent. Ms. Drake, you do realize in many sectors, bribery is considered a felony. Depends on the right people you rub. And she will borrow the 7,000 from you that she will pay back later. Um, so if they're going to meet us, are they going to connect by vast... Uh, by airlock. Yes. Uh, yeah, they will uh, dock to transfer whichever. the cargo and the uh, and the money. Which airlock, A or C? Uh, let me just double check. C. Uh, probably C. Okay. Because it's, right. it's a larger airlock, yep. and it would also lead directly to the cargo base. Um, well, not directly, but you know. Uh, so you go to the airlock. I don't have tokens for him because he's a minor character. But so the once you feel the boom of the you know the airlock making contact, and you're whooshing of the uh, of you know the airlock cycling, and then out steps uh, this one guy and three others uh, who are helping carry this uh, this pod. So you're able to get the uh, the impression that it's an escape pod. Mm -hmm. And the the guy is a dude with short black hair and sideburns, and 
the no, you notice that the pod is actually not like being dragged. It's floating above the ground. It's got anti gravity like a pup. Hmm. And so he says, and then so he, uh, you know, holds out his hand for you know payment. Let me inspect everything first to make sure no damage is on it first. And so he steps She's aside. Gonna... Yeah, mm -hmm. you can look at the pot if you want. All right. Can I do an observation to see if there's anything damaged on it? And um, I'm not gonna. It... I'm not gonna make you roll for that. I'm going to say that All the right. pod is. Um, you know, it's covered in like frost and ice because it's been you know drifted in space. Um. So it's you know pretty chilled, but not really like badly like broken. Hmm. All right. All right. Here's seventy thousand, but on one condition. What? We didn't agree to any conditions. We agreed that you pay and we give you the pod. That's no, the no. deal. You, that you'll get seventy thousand. Don't you worry. I'm just going to ask one thing. Are you going to let the marshals know that you had an accidental call for the marshals and the information of what you have found on my lovely ship is miraculously disappeared? I might chalk it up to a false alarm and he sort of rubs his fingers together uh as that sort of like more money gesture. 70,000. That's the deal. No, we made the deal you... that mm -hmm. you know, I give you the I... pod, you pay up. We didn't agree to any other conditions. Well. Oh, for God's sake, pay the men. Let's get the fuck out. Hang on a minute. How much more are we talking? Well, uh, how much are you willing to offer? How's an extra five? Ten. Five or leave it? We didn't agree to any other conditions. You pay. We, I give you the pod. You pay. If you want now, if you want, hold on. Let's make this interesting. You want to do opposed manipulation to try to try to get in your way. Oh yeah, I would love to. Okay, so uh, I would say that. Hmm, let me just check those modifiers again, just for opposed. Uh, where the hell? Oh, right. It's in this game. It's in fucking uh, skills. Uh, mm -hmm. Oops, that's wrong thing. The skills. Uh, bu 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 manipulation. Okay, so uh, you have more people on your side, um, uh, and I would say, I mean, if you want to make an argument for other stuff, then go for it, but. I would say so far that, you know, you have more people on your side because you have, I would assume Kowalski is there, um, and it depends. Yeah, I know. I mean, McCoy's there. Han is there, obviously. Uh, Madeline, are you there? Rumba? I guess so. Okay. So okay. that's four for you. Uh, and then this guy is backed by three. So actually, yeah, you do have one more person on your side. Um, but, you know, you ask, like, you're, uh, he has nothing to gain by helping you, so that cancels out. So, so currently it's just a flat roll, so I will roll for him, uh, if there's, mm -hmm. uh, oh, did you already roll? No. Um, where the Not fuck yet. are the, where the fuck are the NPCs? Uh, actors, NPCs. And Marilyn Chambers. Oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> let me just see about um, which of these characters has good manipulation. Wait, you're coming, Agent. Why is your manipulation so low? Uh, Who's? Yours. No, 
my manipulation, that is my manipulation with that that's already being in consideration for the um uh, with the empathy role already. All right, let me just double check. I'm um apologize for the delay. I'm just trying to figure out like yeah, it's okay. uh fuck, is there a good character that has um Manipulation. I will. I'll just use the corporate exec because there's no like ship captain or anything like that. Uh, so manipulation. Did you already roll? Oh yes, you did. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, so you've got. Uh, no, 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 no. I have not yet. Oh That's right. All right. That's all. Um, stuff. flat roll. Yeah, it's flat roll. So you and you can push. Uh, cunning. Four successes. Four. Okay, let's see what this guy has. Uh, manipulation. Uh, you win. So he rolls his eyes. All right, all right, fine, five, pay up. Hana, <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to laugh at this. Like, yes, ma'am. I am your she... I am your Android ATM, ma'am. Uh, all right, and she will give him the seventy five thousand. Yes, ma'am, you are my pimp. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my money, Hana? <laughs> she gives him the seventy-five thousand. Excellent. It's a pleasure doing business. Pleasure doing business. Here, here's your floating frozen coffin. He says, and the records men... are wiped clean of your ship, of my ship. Deal's a deal. Yeah. And so he turns, and he and his men walk back aboard their ship. They shut the airlock behind them. Uh, the "Quote unquote floating frozen coffin is now in your custody as the uh, Faraday takes off and departs. Don't worry, Hannah. I'll be getting that money back for you. Don't you worry. The company will be giving a definite compensation for this. I am a synthetic and thus have no rights to property. I am property. <laughs> I am in fact considered property, ma'am. Your property. McCoy, do you want to go ahead and do an, get started on analyzing this? And I'll let the company know that we've got the object in question. All right, as we look to the back. Romero? Uh, well, Sierra would still be on the bridge. So if you, I mean, I'm yeah, assuming you're radioing. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yes. Okay. So she's like, uh, yes, ma'am. All right, start heading back to Anchor Point Station. Uh, yes, ma'am, though we would have to uh, attend our hypersleep for the journey home. That's fine. We'll be doing a few things before we get to that point. Uh, but out of character, though, what she's referring to is, uh, the, I think they're called NDDs, like the neuro something disorder, where you can basically go like insane during hypersleep, or uh, during hyperspace travel if you're not in cryosleep. Oh, no, no, we're just going to do the analysis on the, the pod, then we're going to go ahead and head okay. to sleep. All right. Um, Would like to find out what exactly we got back that's worth seventy-five thousand dollars. Fair enough. So you take the pod to. Uh, are you taking the Scilab one, two, or the module? I mean, it doesn't really matter which, I guess. But module. Okay. So you take the module. pod to the module. I'm gonna just move McCoy. Hana, are you going with? Uh. Yeah, I'll stick with Miss Drake. Be, be McCoy's little nurse. <laughs> Let me just do a five-second interrupt to report that just now the James Webb Telescope successfully deployed both of the wings of the mirror array. Oh, cool. We're gonna see some old galaxies, people. <laughs> So, so the pod is sealed, um, and as for the look of the pod, so imagine if that one Tesla truck was an escape pod, uh, that's kind of the general aesthetic of this thing, it's very, you know, angular, cubic, has some sort of Mandalorian uh, vibes to it, although it isn't obviously Mandalorian made because they don't exist in this franchise, um, and the pod is sealed tight, but there's a hex uh, hexagonal control panel at the base of it. Hmm. All right. <laughs> well, 
I just want to make sure this thing isn't dangerous that's going to co cause us problems when we're in hypersleep, so... Rather not know, rather know if it's a death trap that's waiting to pop open. So the first two uh, questions I have, um, you know, before you start trying to fiddle with the pod, uh, do you bring anybody else into the Scilab, or is it just you three? No more than necessary. Okay. Well, I think me and Madeline, if Madeline's in there, we didn't we determine that this area right yeah, here? Yeah, you can you can stay in observation there before. Uh, yeah. Like before the isolated area here. Well, the observation yeah. was for the uh, for the Scilab area, like right here. Oh uh, yeah, but the oh, you can watch them. You can watch them monitors, I suppose. Yeah, there 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 would be monitors that you could you could survey. Okay, so um, and I see that Madeline's joining. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, I got nothing else to do. Okay. Um. And oh, what the fuck? Um. Uh. So. Now, yeah, what do you do next? Well, we're going to get ready for a uh, physical examination of the specimen. Well, doctor, I want to roll analysis for this, so. Yeah. Uh, I'll help with your observation. All right. No, you can't. Oh, you can't? Analysis for... is it? I, I've got an analysis. Well, keep in mind that the pod thing. is currently sealed. You have to actually open it first. Do you want me to? Yeah. Can we? Like, is this like what kind of pod is this? Just uh, looking at it, is it alien? Is it some oh, standardized medical alien. pod? Okay. <laughs> is it ovoid? <laughs> because we want to get this in some plastic coverings and all that, just to. Yeah, Hana will yeah. open up the pod. All right. So you, you got to treat the pod as if it's yeah, like you don't know if it's dangerous or not, like that. So All right. You open up. You crack open the pod. Um, it you know takes uh a little while to actually open up. As you do, your noses are besieged with a rank stench. It is unidentifiable. But it smells atrocious. The Wait. interior of the pod. What? We get our own air supply, I imagine, like hooked up to. Oh well, I mean something in the wall, I think. Oh, like you have like oxygen masks. Yeah. Okay, then. I assume because I don't want to be breathing oh, yeah, whatever is been festering okay, so... in an old pot. But well, I don't know. Yeah. Would would sense do smells go through those? They're not. No. If you have, if you're if you're properly isolated, you're not going to be smelling anything. Okay. Yes. Oh, I didn't. Supply. Okay, so then forget all that. But inside like the if... pod. Is the rotten, decaying corpse of a four-armed alien in partial natural armor and a, and a mask. Um, but though the mask obstructs the lower half of its face, you can tell from it uh, that, it, or well, the mask obstructs its face. You can tell from the mask that it has several pairs of eyes, just like a spider. All right. Well, let's uh, get this cold down. Let's uh, pump some gold, some cold gas in there. That does not look very happy. Okay, time to roll. Flat yeah. observation. Yeah. Um, what I'm curious about though first is are there is it possible to use medical aid on this kind of thing? Like to You're the GM. Well is it if it's fucking dead it seems a bit hard to cure that. But... Oh true. Um well I'm just kinda curious because I, I am trying to so to give everybody something to do. Um, well, just... medical, I would assume, just from my own understanding, medical aid would be like trying to uh, diagnose. Yeah, look at this. Uh, very <clears throat> yeah, medical that's aid. why it's all about healing. Yeah. Right. yeah. Injuries. Okay. Like well, maybe, so, yeah. maybe you have some insight in something. But yeah. Okay. Well, so then I guess it'll just still be uh, analysis. But I will also mention that you can uh, inspect the pod as well. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, so the uh, the pod yeah. will be uh, Comtech, and the alien will be Observation. Okay. Uh, oh. Who's got the higher Comtech from us? Got seven here. 
I guess I'll roll that one. I mean, Uma, if you want, you could. I mean, you have what, an eight or a nine? Uh, nine income tech. So if oh. you want to roll for the pod, you can, and then uh, Doctor McCoy can roll for the alien. <clears throat> okay, I'm cool with that. All right. Uh, observation. Uh, yep, I'll leave it at that too. Okay, so uh, you've got. Stress myself any further. All right, so you've got. Okay, so McCoy has uh, two successes. Are you going to push that or no? Yeah, I think I will. Ooh, oh, it's a well, good thing you did. Nice. Shit, it's a nice one. Oh my god! All right, so you've got five successes. Excellent. So we'll do the uh, observation first. Okay, so uh, some things that you're able to tell. So this creature is very insectoid in design and sort of, you know, from what you can tell with its biology, though it has some reptilian traits here and there. Um, so an exoskeleton carpus. Yeah, yeah, kind of. It's got like sort of a, an insectoid, like sort of a carapace, but it's got like scales. So it's sort of a mix between like, you know, insect and reptile. It's kind of like a like a forearm bipedal spider, but like mixed with a lizard man sorta. Of. Um. So then that's one. So. Um, the second one, the second little piece of intel you get, uh, is that, you know, this guy has been, uh, drift for a long time, uh, as evidenced by how exposure to oxygen went straight at him once, you know, his figurative shielding was removed. Um, if, do you want to, uh, remove the mask? Eventually, but not yet. Okay. Uh, and then the last bit of usable sort of intel is that this guy actually is not damaged. Like, he doesn't have any sort of external damage, no cuts, bruises, impacts from bullets or lasers, nothing. So, apart from being decaying and rotting and dead, he looks pretty good. Yeah, it's mostly intact. Alright, then. And then, as for the Comtech role with the uh, with the pod, <clears throat> um, so you find out that this pod was launched not from, and it is a pod, just in case I wasn't clear by this point, uh, that the pod was not launched from a ship or a station, but from a planet, um, very far out on the frontier, previously uncharted until now, um, so you can get the coordinates to it. All right. And you can tell from the, uh, from the you know, like the the sort of logs on the pod, that there was some sort of crisis on the planet about two millennia ago, but there's no indication of what exactly it was, whether it was like a civil disturbance or an apocalyptic extinction level event. Uh, this creature was trying to escape from something, but that's kind of a given because it's an escape pod. So yeah, around the time that Jesus was going around healing people, they hauled ass Yep. That's fun. At least that's what it says here. Yeah. And so also the planet, uh you you know, you're able to get the uh, yeah, it actually um the name is translated for you, uh based on like I'm assuming, you know, with that whatever Comtech device you have, because don't you have a, a Seekson device? I think I do. Well, no, I'm, talk I'm talking about Drew. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. I do. Okay, so, you know, the diagnostic device would translate uh, from an alien language to English as Planet M416. Uh, you're not sure okay. if the race that the planet... I or... didn't equip it at the time when I did oh. that roll, so that is a base roll without the oh. device. Oh, okay. Well, if you want, you can roll two extra dice and then just say that you, you did. Hold on. So it's like uh, slash R 2DB. Uh, 2db. Uh, what are the results of that? Uh, one, one success. success. I should probably just go ahead and put it in my actives tab the whole time, just in case. Yep. So that's a total of three in Comtech. Okay. Um, but so yeah, using the, the diagnostic device, um, mm -hmm. 
the you know the so the planet is M416. You're not sure if the race of the alien in the pod hails from, titled it as such, or if it's just a translation uh, sort of mix up. Uh, but you do now have the coordinates to it. Mm. Uma's having a sit there and think for a moment about a few things. How does everyone feel about if we went on a road trip? There are no roads in space, ma'am. You're asking us fun. now. Well, I'm only asking if uh, anyone's interested in maybe doing a quick detour before we head to Anchor Point. Maybe just go ahead and do a scan. Keep in mind that it would not be a quick trip. How far away is it? It would probably take you at least, you know, the same time that, like, probably at least 50% longer than the trip all the way out to MP412. And you would not be compensated for, you know, the additional journey. If anything, you might be, you know, penalized you know for, you yeah, know, when you I get back to Anchor Point. But right. it is an option at some point in the future. You might be able to sort of convince the company to let you go out there. Actually, let's hold on to this information for now. Let's just go ahead and actually get it back to Anchor Point and we'll leave, uh, leave for them to decide what they want to do with it. We've done the analysis. We'll give them a copy, but we'll keep a copy for ourselves. Hmm. I'm happy with that. How's everyone else feel about that? Uh, I just want to get this thing squared away. I will support right. you in whatever decisions you make, ma'am. Well, I think Lorel will probably go ahead and actually grill me for every action I've done today, but yeah. Well, let's just get on. Let's go ahead and get back to civilization. Um, Drake's going to go back to the corporate suite to inform they're heading back to Anchor Point. And we'll just jump back into hypersleep. I think that's the only course, unless everybody wants to have something to eat and jump back into hypersleep, because I think we just want to go straight into being in and done. Yeah, I'm just kind of curious. So uh, if there's anything anybody else wants to do, then just pop this one in the freezer. Okay. Uh, so, Madeline, is there anything you want to do? No, I'm good. Okay. So, if everybody... Okay, so you go into the pods. Uh, everybody except Hana, of course. Mm-hmm. And so you, you know, the trip, you know, goes and, you know, you're traveling for several weeks. And then, uh, well, where are my fucking notes? Um, the, uh, you know, you actually, Hana gets another notification uh, to wake the crew. Oh, God. Because nice. an, cause an anomaly has been detected is what is described. Time to Anomaly get up, out. sleepy heads. Time to get up, sleepy heads. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is actually, if you guys are fine with we're going to this time leave it as a cliffhanger. That's fine. Oh, fuck. All right. I was actually going to turn and say two things. One was, is the Anomaly outside the ship? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I apologize for kind of cutting a little short, but, you know, uh, I just want to... Bryce, I hope... Yeah, and I also I know that Rex had to head out early, so I just wanted him to be able to enjoy yeah. a full session. Yeah, um, I, figured, I figured we were going to be about two as soon as I saw that, so... 
Um, so, but, uh, yeah, let me just do, we'll do XP now. Uh, let me just, player rules, developing your character. we'll find out if old rotting insect made its way out of the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> How much time has passed from our uh, one week and three day journey to that signal? Um, and you then currently resuming. don't know. Because, you oh. know, where we're leaving off is Hana's told to wake the crew. You have not actually checked the, uh, the law, right. like the ship, like the you know the flight details uh everybody okay. let me know uh, do you have your uh, xp stuff open yeah okay um everybody participated in the session so everybody gets one automatically mm -hmm. uh did you uh follow your personal agenda uh, uh, take a look at anybody's agenda if you're kind of uh, mine is not uh not relevant right now. No, mine's not relevant in this case because it kind of went against it. No, I'll have to check see what that is after the game because I could use laugh. Uh, uh, did you risk your life for your buddy? Well, probably not because we didn't necessarily have a lot of combat or any combat for that matter. No, well, uh, we you bribed so we could avoid combat. So yeah, well, that would actually mm -hmm. be overcoming a dangerous event using uh, non-violent means. Um. Even though you okay. nearly went violent, um, but so nobody. I was trying to be intimidating. <laughs> nobody risked their life for their buddy. Uh, if you challenge your rival, you get a point. Uh, yes, McCoy. It's not your rival. We had a fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, I removed things? Hannah as my rival, though. It's oh. just more. Well, you had more... her as a thing, so okay more tolerable nowadays so. <laughs> i don't know who my rival is in this case because i don't know who actually would hate me right now <laughs> probably laro but um you did not challenge or stand up to her so, so no i so, have it down as a buddy that's the problem you like no. me was teaching all know. right what else um so if ever, so the rival so panic rolls anybody i think i know uh drake made a panic roll right that is correct so you made a panic roll i don't remember if um, McCoy made one, did you? No, okay, I only got. So I think it would probably just be, probably just be uh, Drake. Um, you overcame uh, a dangerous event using this time mm -hmm. non-violent means, mm -hmm. uh, because you managed to defuse like what would have been like a one-sided space battle. Um, you made a very significant discovery, probably the biggest in human history by this point. Mm -hmm. Um. Or well, you know, excluding the Prometheus expedition, but uh, significant discovery. Um, did you perform an extraordinary action of some kind? I'm open to uh, interpretation on that. That's a pretty good analysis role. Oh yeah. Really, except maybe that uh, negotiation role by uh, Drake. Mm. Uh, I, I guess I guess McCoy with the uh, all the autopsies this time. <laughs> Yeah, you did really well with the autopsy. So I'll say that uh, McCoy and uh, awesome. and Drake. And did you earn any money? You did not. Yeah. Uh, uh, did no, we did. Oh, you, you did. oh, you're right. You did. Yeah, you got a hundred bucks from uh, from Megan. So you did earn money. I forgot all about that shit. Um, we just gotta start doing like little odd jobs for each other. Like, okay, you hand me that cup. I'll give you ten bucks <laughs> for it. Did you earn money? <laughs> yep. There we go. Oh, they were just passes each other a cup and yeah, pays no, each other I, I, ten I'm bucks. Not, not, you know, it's funny, but I'm not gonna <laughs> no. <A> loophole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so yeah, if I anybody wants democracy. to to roll uh, talents or anything, because we're at the end of session, um, uh, I'm gonna hold off I'm until down. next time. Okay. Uh, okay. I have to decide yet. Okay. What would be a good one? Yeah. Um, uh, well, what I would uh, recommend is the one role that you can automatically pass observation. But that's just... I mean, oh, what, which one is that? It's uh, um, Breakthrough, that, right? Yeah, I think it's Breakthrough. Oh, yeah, yeah it break, is Breakthrough. Uh, you can have more of those specific career things. Yeah, you can take oh, uh, okay. career talents as many times as oh, you Oh, yeah, I'll, I think I'll actually do that. It's pretty useful. Okay. You can... So, uh, you want to yeah, make the that's why I've got... That's the reason why I've got cunning and um, what's it called? Uh, Take control. Uh, 
skills. take control because skills. take control is to do with my uh, wits being oh, the role instead of manipulation uh, no instead of me. MP. And um, I can push it twice. Uh, let's see. Hana knows. Oh. <clears throat> no luck for me. Half and Baigar, if anyone wants those. Yeah, but which mushy human would pick bodyguard? <laughs> well, if someone's like nearly dead and you're at full HP. Uh, yeah, true. But... Yes, it's not as use. Yes, it's not nearly as psychotically useful as it is on synth, where it's like yeah, <laughs> especially day. synth with resilience. It's but a scratch. <laughs> you're I'm acting right. I'm just doing the prep work for um, uh, when we are at, back at Anchor Point Station. Dr. McCoy, would you like to continue learning uh, how to break a human's hand? I mean, I know how to. Yeah. Um, with tools. You could teach me how to do it without tools. Yes. <laughs> so, did you guys uh, have a good time? Yeah. I like the sciencey shit. Yeah, that's I just good stuff. Yeah, I thought it'd be kind of I, cool to have a campaign where that's sort of the focus. I think I'm actually like no disservice at all to GMing, but I think like me being a fan of hard sci-fi, I might at some point make some resource for resource data bank of like little details how you can accurately do that, you know? Yeah, that would be like how, how how scanning works and all that. Yeah, because I don't know. Because I'm starting to think some of these very science focused things they could like they can really nicely lean into the realism that Alien has, and uh, that well, was the stuff that pretty I'm much that was in. very doable this session. So I like that. Well, thank you. I'm glad you liked it. I just find find that we have Doctor McCoy. <laughs> hey, Hank McCoy. <laughs> So. All well, right. Thanks for uh, for playing, guys. I had a good time, and uh, we'll play again uh, next uh, yeah next month at um, that would be the twelfth. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. A note. I think you can actually schedule an event, or maybe I should set the permission. Yeah. No, I have no. Um, I have an event scheduled. It was just at the, like the really top of the fucking queue. Uh, okay, but you can also do like uh, an event, as in like the Discord side of things. Oh, just okay. as, like, a well, I have thing. no idea how that shit works, so uh, um, I might, might look work. into that because it could be very useful yeah. for these right, cases. Take care. All right, see you, Isaac, and uh, yeah, Rob. I'll see you tomorrow for uh, Road to Usad. Okay. See you guys. Enjoy the weekend. Yeah.